Hi gang, um, this video is going to be for installing Joe Hinner's timing advanced key for the KO K6. He's just recently made one for this bike and what you're going to see here is a kind of a how-to to do the job of actually installing it. I had some video that got corrupted so this is going to be a kind of patchwork video. I'm refilming what you're seeing right now because it got corrupted and lost, but this is the opening sequence about it. And um, I'm going to just say, since I've already done it now and it's run, that I can't recommend it highly enough. It makes a big difference, increases your revs, increases your compression, which also gives you just a tad bit more horsepower, but uh, well worth the effort. So what was corrupted was the very beginning where I set the timing I'm going to tell you how to do that, set the timing mark. Um, it's not imperative for this job, but it just helps get the flywheel key in a position to where you can work on it easier. It, it's not going to be at the bottom of the stroke. It's going to be up towards the top. And um, I'm going to talk about the tools that you need. So I'm going to go ahead and move down the camera angle down here to where the tools are and where the, uh, the flywheel is on the motorcycle. Okay, so I have my tools laid out. Um, what you're gonna need to do the job, you're definitely gonna need an impact wrench, a, a good flashlight. This is, this is the Tusk Racing, also, also Motion Pro makes this. This is the flywheel puller that you need, and it is a M28 by one. You're going to need um, a socket wrench and some sockets. This is a 3 8 drive one that I'm using. I would say you need a 3 8 as opposed to a quarter for this job, but either way. These are, these are my impact sockets that I have for this. Um, specifically, the 17 millimeter is the bolt that holds on the flywheel, and that one's torqued very, very hard. A uh, high torque value of 56 foot-pounds, so you're definitely going to, um, I would, I would say that a regular socket's not what you can use, I mean, try it, but if you have impact sockets, 17 millimeter. Um, this is just a 8 millimeter for the cover bolts. And you need a set of, um, Allen sockets or Allen key set for the viewports that go to set your timing. Uh, you're going to need a rubber mallet just to kind of break loose the case. Um, maybe a ver maybe a screwdriver to get the flywheel key out. And um, I used I like T handles to put the side cover bolts back on, that's what I use. I don't really necessarily torque them down to a torque spec, but I talk about it if you want to torque them down with the with the torque wrench, but I use a, a T-handle when I do it. Okay, so I'm gonna to move to the engine and, and talk about, um, you know, setting the time to mark. So on this bike, you have two viewpoints, uh, viewports. And what you do is take these ports off. You don't have to torque these back. When you, when you put it back on, you don't have to torque them very hard. Just like hand tight and then maybe like an eighth more. And then the front one over here. Not a lot to it, but what you do is you get your 17 millimeter socket, attach it to the bolt that's at the end of your crank. It holds on your flywheel. And you move this 
counterclockwise, and you'll see there's a notch in the case that's it comes to a point like an arrow, and you just move this around until you see a T, it's for timing mark, or two arrows. Mine has, no, sorry, two lines. Mine has two lines, so you put it in between the two lines, and that'll give you your timing mark. That's all you do, you're just rotating this counterclockwise until you line it up with the arrow on the side of the case. And that's it. From there, um, the rest of my, vid my video that didn't get corrupted will move forward. I'm doing all of this with the bike on its side. Right now you see it straight up and down because I've already done the work. But you need to lean the bike over on its side so that you can access this without any oil coming out. So like I said, lean it over all the way flat on the ground on its side to start the process. And then from this point forward, you'll see the video. Which I have already done, but I'm just kind of showing how you do it. You, you're just gonna move this and line it up on the side with the case, there's an arrow and you get in between the two lines, which I've got set here. So this is where the flashlight comes into play. You can see real good in between there. So I've already done that. So let's get this shifter off because it's in the way. And I wanted to move it anyway, so it was down a little low. Bolt out. Bring the lever. And there you go. There's that. Alright, I broke loose. There's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Looks like ten of them. Eight millimeter bolts that go on the case. I've already broken loose. I'm just gonna um, back them out the rest of the way. If you're lucky, you can save this gasket. Joe sent me an extra one with this flywheel key, but if you're lucky, sometimes you can save the gasket. I've got a little piece of styrofoam here, but you can use cardboard. I like to take the, the bolts and put them in the location that they came from. Kind of like make a little puzzle so you know when you're putting it back this bolt went here, this bolt went there. Some people draw it out on cardboard. I just like to push them into these kind of a things. Now I'll just set that aside and I'll know, you know, about where they came from. Alright. Get a rubber mallet. I'm gonna step over here. I got my rubber mallet up here. Okay, so I'm hitting the case very I have a rubber mallet. Don't use a metal one. And I'm just kind of breaking it loose kind of pulling up on it, hitting it loose, and we're going to see if I can get this thing to go. Yep, there it goes. Easy peasy. So that's your magneto and your cover. And it's holding up right there. Okay. Just kind of looking things over, making sure that there's nothing loose that I can see in there. Yeah, so, this is good. Seems like there is a little pin, an alignment dowel, that has fallen out. And it's right under here. 
I'm gonna have to get needle nose. These are the things you gotta look for. You don't, you definitely don't want to leave something like this in here. And there you go. An alignment dowel. I'm gonna have to figure out where that came from now because I'm not sure where it was, but obviously it's probably in this higher area, maybe like right here, if I had to guess, but things you have to look for. Make sure you don't do that and don't leave it in your cases. That can get caught up in here and cause severe damage. All right, so I don't own a flywheel, anything that can hold this flywheel. So what I'm hope, hope, hoping that I can do is jam a rag in between this front. There's a gear, uh, I think it's for a counterbalancer, and the backside, uh, the gear on the, um, the end of the shaft coming out for the timing chain. I'm hopeful that I can wedge it in there and that will do it. Hold it while I break loose the uh, the nut on the on the uh, flywheel. All right, so 17 millimeter. Impact sockets are good when you're using an impact. This is going to be on there pretty good. I would imagine like over 60 on the uh, the torque. I'll have to check that with Joe. See what she does. Man. Okay, you can see there's red Loctite. So that thing was really, really on there. Way probably way more than it needed to be. So back the middle part of the puller out, tighten down the bottom, and you're going to go against each other. Hold that down. There you go. Feels like it broke. Yep. Just that easy. Okay, and then you just take it off. Okay. There you go. So right now, I'm assuming my flywheel moves a little, but the, the key is about at 11 o'clock right now, and I'm trying to get it out with my fingers. I don't like to pry these things out if I don't have to, but it might be the case here. So secondary is I'm going to try this. Needle nose to get it. Nope. It's not coming. There. Ah. Success. Finally. Got that thing out of there. It's just a half moon, normal key. So right now I'm cleaning out the actual 
the channel where it sits. Just to make sure I don't have any kind of little nicks or shavings in it. Okay. And now I'm going to get the new key. Well, maybe you can. There's a little step in the key itself. And you want that offset to go to the left. So the little notch is on the right side of it. The offset, the, the remainder, the thicker part, goes to the left. So I'm going to install this in here. Hopefully it'll go easy. And I've got it installed in there. I'm just going to beat it down just a little bit here. It's not level. There we go. Now it's level in there. Alright, now here's the fun part. You gotta put this flywheel back in and line up the notch in the flywheel with the now, now new notch in your flywheel key. And it's very important that you get it very straight in there because if you don't have it right, you can mar the key and it won't be aligned and you'll have problems. So I'm using a flashlight to try to see down in there. Seems like I got it. It kind of fell right into place. So I wanted to get a little bit tighter on this key, kind of show you how it's offset. You can see the offset well right over there. It's kind of hard to see but I'm trying to show you the best I can. You want that little cutout to be flush with the taper on the uh, on the shaft. You don't want it to be raised above so make sure that you you get that at the same angle. I, I recently just stopped what I was doing because I didn't have it at the exact same angle. And then when you go to put your flywheel back on, make sure you sh you shine a light down in there. And I'm going to point to it here. Make sure you shine a light down in there and that you've got that key and this notch lined up correctly before you tighten and torque it down. You don't want to have it you don't want to have it at a bad angle and uh, you can over you can tighten it and then it will mess up that key and you actually could be off of timing you, you want it to make sure that you've got it seated correctly so I'm gonna um, stop this and then I'm gonna move forward again with putting it back together okay so like I was just saying I've got a flashlight I'm making sure that I'm lined up with the key in the right spot Got it on there good. And I'm just going to torque it down. 56 foot pounds is what I've been told by Joe Henner is what this takes. So that's what I'm going to go with. Uh, driver. And I'm just holding it with my hand just to get it hand tight. But I'll come back and get it with the. Um, trying to get my rag out of here. And now I'm wedging my rag. If you have a strap wrench, that's what you need to use on this flywheel, but I don't have a strap wrench. So I'm kind of just wedging a this rag in between the gears here just to keep it from moving but um, in this scenario you're not trying to keep the timing anyway so all right so I've got this down it's about as good as I can get it like this now I'm going to switch to my torque wrench
Okay, 56. Woo! That's a lot of torque. All right, clean everything up. All right, so two spots have dowels. One stayed in the gasket itself, so it's in this lower part here. Put that in there like that. The second one is right here at the top. That's the one that fell out earlier. So seat the seat these. And I'm gonna show you a little trick that will make it easier to get this if you ever had to take it off again. You might be able to save your gasket again a second time. And what it is, So it seems to be running, uh, it's a little cold right now, but um, it's revving quicker. Uh, so hey guys, um, sorry my camera messed up when I was finishing that, but after you put the key in, make sure you look with a flashlight that you have that key in the right position that it lines up with the flywheel key and the flywheel, uh, put it back on uh, the flywheel itself, torque it, torque it down to 56 foot pounds. Make sure you do that. Um, you want to get a strap wrench to hold it if you can. Um, but, you know, anyways, you want to get that on there. It, it will rotate. And then uh, just reverse order, you know, make sure you put all your little bolts back in your cover, put your cover back, put your cover back on. Uh, the little secret that I was going to tell you was to save your gasket, you can put a little, just with your finger, a little layer of grease on both the mating surfaces of the gasket. And that a lot of times will save it so you can use it again. It won't stick. Um, but go ahead and put all those bolts back in, in the right order, the right bolt for the right hole. Make sure you get your little clip for the wiring. Make sure you get your uh, reconnect your cable, your uh, your clutch cable back into the holder of the clutch arm, and then uh, tighten these in a crisscross pattern. All these bolts that go to the to the cover itself. Make sure you put your um, your view your viewport. Um, caps the one in, the one on the side and the one in the front put them back on it's just kind of the reverse order of what i showed you earlier when i took them off um don't over tighten these little eight millimeters i use the t-handle and i just run them down in a crisscross pattern until they get all uh you know till they're basically till they're they're down hand tight and then I just give them a little like an eighth of a turn more just all the way around that's all you need I, you can find the torque value you can ask Joe for the torque value I think it's only like seven somewhere between seven and ten pounds if you want to torque them down I don't do that I just use the t-handle um, make sure I check them later on and so I, I got this flywheel key in and let me tell you just from revving it you can tell the difference. It'll rev way quicker 
and that the throttle response it'll rev real quicker um, I didn't get a chance to ride it yet I'll get some riding video here coming up but the weather is real shit this weekend so there no no one was really open I'm sure you're all going through the same thing but and that's it you know highly recommend Joe Henner advanced flywheel key for this KO 250 and for all all he makes them for a lot of other bikes um, you know, the Orions and the GPXs. So uh, get with him if you want to get one of these. It's um, probably dollar for dollar one of the best, one of the advet, the best mods that you can do uh, for your dirt bike. They're, they're very inexpensive. I don't know what he's gonna charge. He hasn't even figured this out yet. He hasn't even made any of these. I'm, I'm the guinea pig for the KO, but um, yeah, you know, you do have to invest in the tools to, to do the job, but overall, it's still, you know, you're going to get a couple horsepower, you're going to rev out quicker, you're going to burn the fuel better, it, you're physically advancing the timing, so you're moving, you're increasing your compression a little bit, you're moving your, um, you're moving your piston and the compression a little closer to top dead center. All of this is before top dead center, quite frankly, but you, uh, you're not gonna be chasing down. You're gonna have that fire a little bit closer to the top and then really pushing that piston down even better because they build these things with a little bit of a gap in there to make it uh, less, more durable I guess is the reason why they do it, but in gen but this is not something that's going to harm it either. Uh, it's quite a, an improvement. I highly recommend you need to go talk to Joe and get yourself an advanced time key. So that's it, guys.